today we're making quiche. I am gonna, we have an abundance of eggs, and so I said I would make quiche for us. I'm gonna make two. Um, it's a two for one this morning, or today. I'm gonna take one of them to my daughter's, and then I will have quiche for um, lunches, brunch, breakfast. You know, you can have this for breakfast, you can have it with a salad for lunch or dinner. It's delicious. And I've got uh, eight ounces of spinach sauteing off on my stove right now. My other ingredients are a small onion and a bundle of green onions, all chopped up. I've got eight eggs, some half and half, but I didn't. I know I didn't have enough for my recipe. You're gonna need your uh, Danish whisk. And on this plate, I have six uh, six slices of bacon that I cooked off in the oven earlier, and then about eight slices of. Um, Jarlsberg Swiss cheese that I just cut up and you can grade Swiss cheese you can do this is what I had so I wanted to make sure I use what I have and no waste so you just cut it into squares chunks and then break that up as you're messing around with it to put it in um, you want at least a cup and a half of cheese okay Dijon mustard salt pepper we're ready to go so let me stir the spinach I'll bring you in close and I'll show you how this comes together. okay so I've got my eight eggs in here you just take this is a Danish whisk um, I guess I'm not in right in there there we go um, you want to get those beaten up pretty good this, this does a really good job I need Dijon mustard um, because of the bacon and the spinach, you gotta have a, it's a, not a tablespoon. I'm gonna do two, or, you know, one and a half. It's really to taste. I'll, I'll give you the recipe um, in the blog as soon as I get it up and running. So be patient with me. Okay, then we need salt, about a half a teaspoon of salt cracked pepper. You can use white pepper. I I don't care if I see pepper. And then we're going to add our milk. Now this is whole milk. I was going to use half and half, but um, I'm just going to stick with the whole milk. One and a half cups of whole milk. that together oh it's gonna be good okay so then you're going to bring your ingredients over and I've got to equally put these down so let me get my pie shells down in the pie plates um, I'm gonna put the I've got store-bought ready-made dough I'm gonna get those in and I'll be right back Okay, so I'm spreading out my spinach, and honestly, I cooked off just a little bit of kale because uh, you want a pretty good layer, and I want plenty of vegetable in here. So uh, I would say for two pies, um, a 12 ounce package probably would work out pretty good. I sauteed that off in duck fat and a clove of garlic at the very end, so my house smells amazing so here's some sauteed kale in the same pan as I did the and these are my Curtis stone pans they're amazing I'll try to leave you a link for one of these I'm definitely leaving a link for the Danish whisk every kitchen needs one nothing gets stuck in there it's wonderful so you've got that layer down you're gonna Put a layer of cheese. Now, be generous, right? It's okay. It's quiche. Let's put this down here. And if you want to break this up, like I said, use um, you can use shredded, already shredded. You can do whatever you want. Oh, some bacon snuck in there. Oh darn. Okay. So I try to just get it as easy, even as possible. Nobody's getting cheated out of cheese, right? All right, 
Looks good to me. All right. Who who needs who's heavy? I think there that could go over here. Okay. <laughs> you can go all day. And then the onion, I'm just going to mix this up. This was a small onion out of my garden and a bundle of green onions. I'm going to split that up. Again, I'm just being generous, but try to be even even so each quiche is the same. And now your bacon. Ooh, that's going to be the tough one. And this already had a couple pieces. So this is a great way to stretch um, protein. I mean, six pieces of bacon is not going to feed, uh, you know, 10 or 12 people, but this quiche will definitely, these two quiches will. Um, this is what I traditionally will do for Thanksgiving morning, is have a quiche ready for everybody. They can have a little wedge, a big wedge, however they feel, to tide them over until Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, now that we've got that all good, all in there, we're gonna pour down our egg mixture. And I need to get this. Mmm, it's gonna be good. This is gonna end up like a custard. And I probably should have crimped the edges of my pie shell, but that's okay. And if you don't feel like you have enough custard filling, feel free to add more, do a few more eggs. And I might. You, th sometimes, you know, those eggs are a little bit small, so. And I'm gonna egg wash the sides of my pie dough. So let me bring you back. I'm gonna whip up four more eggs. Um, no, I'm gonna whip up three more eggs and another half cup of milk. Okay, so before I add my new custard mix, to the pie crust. Um, I'm gonna use that to brush the edges of my pie dough. And that way we know it's gonna have that beautiful brown, golden, glisteny pie crust that we all love and enjoy. I certainly do. All right. Make sure you kind of get down the sides just in case the custard does not come all the way up the side. We want our crust to look delicious, beautiful. Okay, now pour and pour. And that was, I actually did um, four eggs because they're small and a half a cup of milk. So that's as far as I want to go because these are gonna souffle up and you don't want it too thick. Okay, in a 350 degree oven, these are gonna go. As soon as they start um, cooking, and I know my parchment isn't gonna stick on my pie crust, I will, um, I'll go ahead and cover, just drape parchment paper over the top and that way they don't brown too quickly. And we'll be back when these are done. You should be able to shake them and have a little movement, but nothing that indicates that it is liquid. So you wanna wait till those set. That usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay guys, so here are the two beautiful quiches. Doesn't that look delicious? I am super excited, but you're gonna to wanna to let these rest. These were in the oven for a half hour at 350, and then I turned the oven down to 325, kept the parchment on top so it wouldn't over brown. This one got a little, uh, I think that side of the oven's hotter. You want, you don't want any jiggle in the middle um, when you move your, your tray around. Um, there shouldn't be any jiggle or very little. So this will be ready. You don't want to eat this hot. You want to eat this at room temperature or just slightly warm. Uh, trust me on this, you're gonna appreciate it more and you'll taste every bit of it. So one of these is going to my daughter's and one of them stay in here and I will get some pictures and yum. All right. <laughs> and then we'll do a taste test for you. Maybe we'll do a taste test at my daughter's. How about that?